Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie. For those who don't know me, reviewing Love is Blind UK Season 1, Episode 7. Before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell, and leave a comment down below. So we start with Catherine, who is still very peeved with Freddie, and she claims she's not upset about what happened at the couple's retreat, couple's honeymoon, couple's therapy, whatever. Um, but she's mad about something. That's more like a tea cup. You can still put coffee in there. Oh, they're nice. You got them in an 11. You look nice in that, no? Stop it. And you're winding me up and you know you are. I don't know, there's just tension for some reason. He's always joking and I need him just to be serious. Someone in the comments uh, two videos ago was like, I think Catherine is just looking for issues. I agree. She brought up the cheating thing and I feel like he gave an adequate explanation and it seemed like she forgave him, but now it's, oh, he jokes too much. And it's just, they later on see his apartment and she's like, oh, it feels like a woman came in. Girl, 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 relax, okay? It definitely kind of sounds like she's looking for things. I do understand her when she says that she wants to be treated like a fiance and not a friend. Hear it, I so hear it. We don't necessarily have the luxury in this process to be friendly. I actually need to feel all the romantic vibes, all of them. I need you to be serious about this situation because I'm about to change my life, sir. However, I think um, doom and gloom is also not the vibe, especially considering his career. He has a very serious career, a very morbid career. Let the man joke. Okay, let the man have some kind of levity in his life. Serious at work and serious at home, but you too, I don't know. To me, that's a lot, that is a lot. If the issue isn't the cheating conversation, what is it? Cause you're obviously in a mood, we can sense it, he can sense it, share with the class, please and thank you. Demi and Ollie plan a dinner for her friends and this is where the, the producers are emphasizing Ollie's behavior to lead into the ADHD conversation. Could have stayed this lemon. I don't know, what, what are we doing? Can we just focus on what we're getting from the meal? Ooh. No, Ollie, what are you looking for? I should have stayed at home, shouldn't I? Should have. My middle brother has been diagnosed with ADHD, which is also why, yes, I do know that it can show up differently in different people. Some behaviors though can't be excused. Some behaviors can't be excused by just having ADHD. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But anyways, I say all that to say, looking at Ollie right now is like looking at my middle brother. Oh my gosh, it, if I would have closed my eyes and just had described video, I swear they would have been talking about my brother. Like same, 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 same. So Demi is saying that it is important for her, it is important for Ollie to impress her friends because uh, with their approval, she will then introduce him to the parents. I would probably handle it the same way. I think my friends know me better than my parents. And I'm, I know my friends know me better than my parents. So if you get their approval, you can meet the fam. Bobby and Jasmine have an interesting conversation, okay? She says that she has an insecurity when it comes to social media. She doesn't like how men basically move mad in the DMs and things. And she has noticed that Bobby is very active on social media. Just really trying to make sure that I'm not spending all day on my phone. Like I have felt a little insecurity there. If he has any like skeletons in the closet, Firecracker Jasmine's gonna come out. Obviously I search on him on YouTube. Obviously you know the video, this is you. Mm. It was like a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. mm. But obviously seeing that, I'm just like, oh. A few things are going through my head when this conversation was happening. Number one, didn't I say, like in the first episode, if not the first, the second, I said as soon as this girl goes and sees his Instagram, she's gonna have a problem. And sure enough, she has a problem. The issue that came up for me in this conversation was her anticipating already being upset with Bobby. She was like, um, she has uh, uh, the potential to like, I don't remember the words verbatim, but she'll, she'll bark at him essentially. And we're like, yeah, we know, we saw. We saw you do it to another man in the previous episode. So I can only assume how, how much vitriol she's gonna have if it's her own man acting up with her. I don't know why she's already anticipating it. She's preempting this anger this frustration. And I'm like, why? 
yeah, you saw something on social media from like the pandemic and stuff, but he hasn't shown you anything to be concerned about. Now she does say her insecurity with social media is because men sometimes just follow these girls and like up all their pictures and DM them and stuff like that. I wonder if the guy who had a baby on her found the girl through social media. Like, is that why that stings so much? Hmm. I wonder. But anyways, she's laying out her boundaries. I can't be mad at that. I hope that Bobby's also laying out his boundaries because he's respecting her boundaries. He's definitely uh, the kind of guy who will cater to his woman's needs. At least that's what we see on camera. I don't know if Jasmine is going to reciprocate that. It seems like she likes to be in the driver's seat. And right now, Bobby is letting her. And maybe he'll just, he likes it that way. Maybe he does. That's their business, child. Demi's friends come over for dinner. I did not catch their names. No, I didn't catch the name of the guy, but the girl's name was Jasmine. And I was like, oh, is, is that probably why you latched onto the other Jasmine? She reminds you of your friend. Anyways, they are very inquisitive about life inside and outside of the pods. Was there any clashing with girls on who they like? Did anyone like the same guy? And she's my good friend at the start. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I also trust that my connection was a lot stronger. And it you know, was. I was happy. Yeah, we were both happy. That was, was chemistry happy. for real. Mm -hmm. right. In terms of our connection, the one thing that made me feel very com comfortable, would you adopt her, would you foster? And you was like, yeah, I would. My mum's actually adopted. Yeah. So yeah. for me, I'm open to like, adopting and fostering. From what I see so far. I'm happy. Yeah, just take your time, man. Get to know yeah. each yeah. other more. There's no rush. Yeah. And there's no pressure. One thing I don't think any of us can argue on is the fact that when it comes to values, these two are in alignment. They've been in alignment from the pods. It seems like they're still in alignment here. The points where they do need to work on is definitely communication and also navigating how they want to show up in public around other people. She's yearning for more affection, even though she says she's content with what they do behind closed doors. She wants more. I don't know if she's told him that, but she's told us that she wants more. He don't want to do all that. On top of that, he doesn't want to do the romantic gestures either because he feels like their relationship doesn't need that. Is she going to be okay with that? I don't know. I don't know. So definitely communication, definitely uh, figuring out how they show up in public, how they check in with each other to still feel validated by their partner, even in a social setting. But alignment is there. Compatibility, for the most part, I would say that it's there. Attraction, we're still questioning it. <laughs> At least I am. <laughs> I'm still questioning it, but the more I see them, the more I think that they suit. So we'll see. We will see where this connection goes. Freddie talks to Catherine at his, no, Freddie takes Catherine to his house and she was pleasantly surprised. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, look at that spider. Oh, it's fine, yeah, just, just forget that. <laughs> oh, your fridge needs a clean. Okay, well, that's your job then. This is how I entered the bedroom. <laughs> Are you sure a female does not live here? No. It makes me respect him because there is definitely a different side to Freddie. That's a lot for someone who's 32 years old. I have questions. I have questions. You know that uh, trend on social media where it's like, somebody has cooked here. It's giving somebody has cooked here. The bedroom specifically. Somebody has cooked here. I'm sorry. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Or maybe he really is that cutesy, that demure, very mindful, very demure. They address the weird tension that was going on between them the day before. I'm pretty sure it was the day before. And she's apologizing. She says, listen, sometimes I'm snappy. Um, I don't want to be like that, but that's just how I am. And he's saying it's fine. Maybe it is fine for now. But I have a sneaking suspicion that if she gets into these moods that cannot be explained, and it just is followed by an I'm sorry afterwards, that's gonna wane on him after a while. Maybe, it would wane on me. It absolutely would wane on me. So yeah, you can apologize for maybe being in a funk and not being able to articulate it, but eventually I feel like Catherine's gonna have to learn how to communicate what's going on. Cause that weird energy all the time is gonna get irritating. Maria and Tom rehash their occupation conversation and she's like, listen, it's water under the bridge. This is only a blip in our relationship. Tom can be quite judgmental and I don't think he thought he was like that. It was the one time I was like, I'm annoyed that that's a little bit of how you are. So we're good. Mm. Are we? Yeah, of course. How are you feeling about me meeting your family? I more care about, like I said, how you treat me. Culture, my religion, I'm very proud of where I come from. PDA thing, that's not 
the norm. My mum would feel incredibly uncomfortable. If they don't love you, then see you later. Mm. To you. He seems very receptive to the instructions that Maria was giving regarding how he should engage with her family. So that is good. I do think that they have a lot of big fish to fry in this relationship. Cultural stuff, religion stuff, family values stuff, just a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. So Maria says she's quite reserved because of her upbringing. That was kind of a surprise to me. I feel like she's very open and vibrant and, and exuberant and just like, yeah, it, it, she wasn't giving reserved to me. Not at all. Maybe she once was when she felt more tied to the constraints of her culture and her religion. But she said that her family accepts her and the life that she has curated for herself. So maybe that has freed her from being reserved. So that was interesting. They both get emotional when talking about um, her father and the fact that when he died, she had that realization that he will never meet who she marries. But she's confident that if he did get to meet Tom, he would be pleased by Tom. So that is good. Demi says that she has noticed some behaviors in Ollie. This obviously prompts the ADHD conversation. Your impatience of like, yeah, I want to do this, the impulsiveness, your pacing. I get really stressed out about little things that like mm. don't bother you. Yeah, but yeah, I do have ADHD. Really? My last relationship, I never told her until like, like a year in. Yeah. Now I'm really surprised you notice because no one really notices. And it's just like... But look at the way you articulate yourself. Don't ever be ashamed of that. I want to take a moment to acknowledge the struggles that Ollie most likely goes through. We don't know all the struggles. That's why I'm saying it that way. Living with ADHD. Totally understand. It is very frustrating to have a harder time doing things that a lot of other people just don't struggle with. That's annoying. Understood. Why was he able to have eye contact with Catherine though? That's my question. That's my question. Like the way that he talked with in the retreat, I think it's gotten better. But the way that he was talking to Demi compared to how he was talking with Catherine night and day, night and day. So all the people talking about, oh, he has ADHD, guys, be kind. Yes, be kind. But let's point out what we see. And what we see is he wasn't seeing her, but he was seeing Catherine, though. Hmm. Interesting. So he says that in his last relationship, he didn't disclose the fact that he had ADHD until about a year in the relationship. I ask you guys if it is important to disclose a diagnosis like this early on in dating. Especially if you're about to get married to somebody in what, a month? <laughs> yeah, I think you should say that pretty early. I think this is something that he should have mentioned in the pods. I do. I kind of feel like it's similar to the US version when, what's her name, Jessica, was withholding the fact that she had a child. Certain things are just a part of you. And yes, you don't want to deter potential options, but if you disclose that and somebody's like, mm, that's not for me, that's one less person you have to waste your time with. I think you should disclose in a process like this. In dating, it's a little bit different. You have more time. You have a little bit more space to think about things and whatever. But if marriage is the end goal after 30 days, I'm gonna need to know within the first few, what am I walking into? What am I gonna, you know, what am I gonna be dealing with? What do I have to come to terms with for myself regarding being with you? Like, that's important. That's important. And he's a big man. He's 33. At that point, I would kind of, I don't know when he was diagnosed, but... Now that you know you have ADHD, I think it's important to get into the habit of telling potential partners. Yeah. So it's time for Catherine to meet Freddie's family. I don't know how she was going to deal because they're all just as jokey as he is. He's going to the wedding. It's all happened quite fast, he's thinking. <laughs> Would you like to be my best man? He doesn't understand now, but he will on the day. People look at him and they think, oh, I bet he's you know, got loads of girlfriends or whatever. <laughs> got some competition <laughs> cat with the old ladies <laughs> on Wendy's. They all come to have a look. Is that Freddie here last night? <laughs> yes. I'm about to step up my game. Yeah. <laughs> so fat, he looked like a sumo wrestler. Do we see him compatible? Yeah, yeah, like a little Instagram couple. So it's coming with its challenges, I think. Like what? You know, jokey at times, and that might grate on her a little bit sometimes. Deep down, you know, you are softer, like you still got to be your own person. On Catherine's side, I can totally understand why you wouldn't want to be with somebody who just can't take anything seriously. Freddie doesn't give me that impression, but if that's how she perceives it, that is her perception. On Freddie's end, I could get why you wouldn't want to be with somebody who dims your light, especially considering his line of work. 
He needs some levity in life. God forbid your partner just adds to the doom and gloom of things. Oh my gosh, that would be so heartbreaking. So anyways, she, yeah, she does go out more. She goes out more and he's a homebody, which I didn't expect considering their personalities. But yeah, the sister is showing some concerns for this whole process. She doesn't want her brother to get hurt and stuff. Um, there was something in the preview where the sister said, there's something off. I don't know when that conversation happens. Maybe it's in the next episode, but yeah, I want to know what the sister has picked up on that we have yet to find out. Cause Catherine, I, I, I do believe that she's looking for stuff and I'm like, girl, what's, what's tea? Why are you trying to sabotage this? What's happening? I want to know. Tom meets Maria's family. And although they are very supportive of Maria, they're skeptical at the pace of the process. Been like, Absolutely fine yeah, so far, no isn't it? Do you find it easy to talk to each other? Yeah, definitely. We both know there's a lot more we have to learn about each other. Yeah. yeah. Your heart and your mind don't have quite time to catch I up. I totally get that. It's still a hard pill to swallow. I don't want all of you to think that we've come here and mm. that's it, 100% they're getting married, because that's not the case. Yeah. Are so. you snobby and judgmental? Yeah, yeah. Are you better now? I've learned a lot about myself. Yeah, that's the compromise, isn't it? You know? Was it just me? Or did Tom look irritated? when Maria called him out for being judgy. It, it looked like he really wanted to like bite back, but he was thinking time and place and this is neither. I, I don't know. Y'all let me know if you felt that energy too. Maria was scared most about the sister's approval. The sister gave it. She just had um, questions about his authenticity, especially with how quick the process is. They also got emotional about the dad. And I said in the first or whenever these two started talking, she's in a very vulnerable place, Maria. And I wonder how that's going to affect their relationship. At the mention of her dad, it seems like everybody gets really emotional. So I just wonder if she's in a space to jump into a life-changing experience like this. It'll be interesting to see uh, where that goes. He says that the process has changed him. He feels like he's become a better person since being with Maria. I hope that that's true. I hope that he genuinely is changing and he isn't just changing for the sake of wanting to be with Maria. We see a lot of points of contention in this relationship, but they kind of, it's not even that they sweep it under the rug. But for me, it's enough to, to inquire more and it feels like they don't. Maybe that's a production error. So yeah, I wonder, do you actually want to change? Do you actually feel like you're a better person or are you putting on a front so that you don't lose Maria? Steven is really excited, like really excited to introduce Sabrina to his friend and brother. And although they share a few concerns, they are in full support of this relationship. We've been on a bit of an experiment, haven't we? We have. Okay. You said yes. <laughs> He's surprised. Look, I, I don't think I'd do what you guys have done. We've each had our own little apprehensions, but I'm going to stay where I am in London at the moment. You're going to keep your place in Belfast. We've got a connection that's that's deeper than any other relationship that I've had. I wanted someone who added value to my life, not becomes my life. No. He's exactly the same, exactly and I think same. that. Well, I said that, didn't I? I've got my head screwed on, and I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't think this was real. Like I've been saying, there's really nothing to say about these two. It just, it seems like it works. Barring that kid's conversation, they've been in alignment on damn near everything. So it's no surprise that things are going so seamlessly for them. I loved the assurance that Stephen had when speaking about his relationship. It did, like, it sounded like he had been with this woman for years and he was like, there's no question about my decision. I'm marrying this woman. I'm just making sure that y'all are on board with it. And whether or not you are, I'm doing it. I just, I loved how firm he was in his stance. And it was great that um, his brother and friend did co-sign the decision anyways. But yeah, that kind of confidence, it seems like gave them confidence. And so everybody at the table was confident and it was nice to see. The episode ends with Nicole, <laughs> this part made me laugh. Nicole teaching Benaya how to dap up her dad. I was like, girl, you are so unserious. But the more I see these two, uh the more I like it. It's going like it. <laughs> I'm not going to do that to your dad. Nicole, you've done well, eh? Oh, nice. thank you. Got, you got, Would you like some 
Tabule. I suppose, my dear. Yeah. We don't all have what it takes to make a relationship work sometimes. As long as we can respect each other's differences, like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fine. Love grows. Nice. Love yeah. grows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy you found each other, and yeah. it, it looks like. We're too soon for me. To <laughs> I don't think that could have gone any better. I'm this close to going and watching her episode of Come Dine With Me because the food that she cooked, uh, I think she said she's Lebanese. It looked real good. It looked real good. What's his name was eating it up too? Benaya? Yeah, he was, he was eating it up. Okay. Basically, uh, Nicole was like, just be yourself. There's really no rules. Like, if you want to hug my dad, go and hug my dad. If you want to shake it, go ahead and do it. He was just himself the entire time. They were eating it up. The parents, they loved it. The only concern that came up was the fact that she'd been married before. So they were scared that she would be hurt again. The process is expedited. So how serious could you be in a few weeks about marrying somebody? So Benaya assures the parents that yes, the process is unconventional, but my intentions for your daughter are pure. It's giving pure, I can't lie. The homeless man is winning me over, okay? Maybe Nicole is beating the actor allegations, maybe. We'll see. But yeah, I root, I root for them, I do. The couples that I root for, honestly, I'm actually still rooting for Ollie and, and, and Thing. I just hope that Ollie is being real with Demi. And if he is, then cool. If he's not, it's pitchforks at midnight. Sleep with your eyes open, okay? Um, Benaya and Nicole, I like it. Ugh, I do, I do. Steve and Sabrina, also like it. Maria and Tom, it, it, Tom is giving inauthentic to me right now. So the verdict is out on them. Jasmine and Bobby, I like them separately. As a couple, I wonder what the logistics are gonna be. It seems like she really does need a more rough and tough kind of guy. And Bobby, it's not even that Bobby's giving walkover. I just wonder if Bobby can handle. I wonder if Bobby can handle Jasmine. That's really it. But yeah, we'll see. Anyways, those are my thoughts so far. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.